Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming at you with another video. Working back on the Honda Z50. So a couple little parts came in. Uh, one of them was this exhaust piece right here. This is the collar that I needed. It's a two-piece collar. And that is needed for the exhaust because right now I can pick the exhaust up and down. You can see how loose it is. And that goes up inside there and compresses with the gasket. And I'll show you that a little bit more when we get on get this thing ripped off so also the carburetor clamp right here came in which I put that on you guys know how to put those on you just loosen them up slide them over clamp them down bottom and that is an important clamp because if you use a hose clamp see right here how it's got this little black margin right here and a black margin on this side this clamp is designed to clamp right in between that into that track if you don't if you use like a hose clamp it's going to crush all that down and it could interfere with your choke. You don't have much clearance between your choke, so you have to use that clamp. So this bike right here that I got from Harvey Spoon, it had the air filter on one bike and the clamp on the other. So we were able to use this. Uh, actually, I think it came out this. Yeah, it was on the same bike. Sorry. Um, I had the clamp from the, the bike and I had this air filter, but it was missing this rubber boot, which I ordered and this clamp. So these are the two items that were missing. Now the whole air induction system is complete um, and that part's done. So now we can move on to the next thing. So the next thing would be air going in and now air coming out. So we're gonna do the exhaust. Let me get you guys in the stand, but if you guys haven't had a chance yet, please hit, and you like these videos or repairs, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when I post a video, you guys get it. Let's get you guys in the stand and we'll get ripping this thing off. Now I just have a set in there with a couple of nuts down bottom. And I want to show you guys something too. You can get these at any hardware store. They're, um, what do you call it there? Long nuts. Okay. So this bike right here. See this right here? It's a long nut. I like these because it covers all the threads on the stud. Instead of having these little ones right here. And then what happens is this right here rusts to the stud and then it ends up pulling the whole thing out. It's just a big mess. But if you have one of these, it goes all the way up there, covers all the stud, gives it a little bit more protection. So that's kind of something I'm adding on to the bike. Just because it's down low and you know how water is. Water gets everything down low. So um, it's just a good protection thing. I use them on the KEs too. The K hundreds and stuff. So she guess how this all goes. It'd be nice to get this exhaust all tidied up today. And get this all up and in there. Okay. Now let's get that top mount bolt off. I don't have the back one on there yet. These are a set of Craftsman wrenches I picked up. Um, they're fairly cheap. These are actually good quality ratchet wrenches. And they're fairly, um, they were priced nice. I got a whole set, had Mexican standard on them. And I'll tell you. I have, um, you know, the older Craftsman wrenches. I have some um, gear wrenches and everything else. I like these as well. These are these more have the same styling as the Snap-on, so they get that same feel to them. They're really good quality, uh, good quality wrenches. Okay, and now I got to finagle with this flange. This one. They can really get jammed up in there, guys. Okay. All right. So we have that. Make sure there's no high spots on your flange. You want to make sure it's all the way down. This is the part where it gets a little tricky because you get these two halves. And this gasket now when you pull your gasket out you probably be like Kevin mine's flat well this is called a copper crush gasket and this is going to be flat once I tighten that down so this right here takes up all the slack and rides on the top of the flanges here so it completes the circle so now the trick part is is to hold three items up inside there that are loose that if you put this up in there, it's going to fall right out. And these as well. 
when you put these up in there, these right here are going to most likely fall right out too. When they go in there. Actually, that does hold in pretty well. Okay. So, if they are too loose and they keep falling out, you can put a dab of grease on them. Okay, if you put a little dab of grease, it'll hold them in there if it really if they keep falling out. Um, this one actually has a little bit of friction to it to hold it in. So we're gonna try it without the grease because I rather use it without the grease than with the grease. But if they kept sliding out, everything kept falling out, I would use a little bit of grease, which I have right here in hand, to do that. But understand, if you use grease on the exhaust part, it will smoke a little bit and will um, what do you call it? It's gonna have to burn off. So. The gasket goes up in first, and then your two halves go together like so, and then go in back of it. Okay, like that. It's very tricky to get these set into into place because you know you're fighting carbon. A gasket kept trying to fall out, or keeps trying to fall, I should say. But once you get it circled and in, in there, it's pretty good. Okay. All right. So I got the gasket. I'm not sure you guys what that looks like, real quick. So if you look right up in there you can see I've got the copper gasket and the uh, let me see if I turn this light on for you there we go and you can see how it fits up inside the gasket and then the two rank the two halves and then we'll tighten up the uh, they'll put the flange on it once you get once you get that all into position it's gonna go a little easier for you and now for the exhaust itself. So we're gonna take the exhaust, it's gonna sit in back of the shock mount. This is where it gets a little tricky, guys, because once that touches that, it's gonna to wanna to fall out the bottom. All right? So our job is to gonna be try to get that in the back stud that um, likes to fall out. So I'll get my bolt right here. On the place. Okay. Come on. You're almost there. It's going to be a tight one, guys. stud is, is going to be a pain in the neck. Alright, oh, no, it's got to come down. See, now it doesn't want to line up at all. Hmm. Remember I told you I think this exhaust is bent? I believe it is bent. I definitely believe this exhaust is bent. 
I wasn't quite sure about it, but I'm pretty sure it's bent. Hmm. I'm pretty sure this exhaust is bent because I'm into the stud back here and with it up in there it just clears that bolt up there so I think that this right here got hit at some point and kind of tweaked it back a bit a tad so all right so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tighten up these two bottom bolts here and see where the uh, crush gasket how it sits and go from there before I really try twerking on this exhaust. We'll get her into position first and then go from there. It is not uncommon to have a bent exhaust on these because they're so low. Especially if the bike was crashed. And this engine right here, I don't know the story behind it because I didn't, uh, this didn't come from Harvey Spooner. This motor right here came from a, um, a fellow subscriber. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off, I'm going to loosen up the shock bolt and see if I can't kind of maneuver it around it. So let me get that off real quick. I'm not going to take it off, off, I'm just going to move it off to the side. Yeah, it definitely has to come back. All right, so what I'm going to do, it, it's just a slight bit off up in the front there. So I'm going to finish tightening off the flange down bottom. And then we're going to see if we can maneuver this pipe. So let's get this into place 100% in the front here. And I'm tightening these up evenly too, so I have an even gap between that and that. So, all right. Now, what I want to do is bring this back. So it's past that stud. And then I'm going to see if I can torque the head back on this boss right here. It is so close, it's not even funny. All right, so after about 10 minutes of uh, bending and twisting, so I had to loosen up these flanges again and um, used a screwdriver in the hole, I thought I was recording for that part, and pushed it over. Um, I was able to get that to line up. So the exhaust is a little on the fatigue side from being, uh, it definitely got hit. But it is on there now, which is nice. And then I will do the bottom flange here. And monitor it, make sure there's no, not going to be no leaks. Once again, keeping the same margin or gap, if you want this thing to be straight. Once this thing heats up where it's sitting correctly now, it should be all right. Don't have to go crazy tight with these either because you got a crush gasket up in there and that's what you're crushing down. So just keep it, um, tighten it, but don't go stupid tight with them. 
Now it feels like it's tightening up. Just gonna get a little bit more on, and then I'll tighten that up a little bit more. Okay. Good. And good. Just about good. Okay. All right. I'm happy with the torque of that, the tightness. All right, so you get your two bolts down bottom here with that crush gasket. So if I pull this back apart, it would be flat. But I could tell this right here got hit. So um, after I put the ties on, I'm going to take my mallet and I'm going to tap right here. And what that's going to do is I'm going to tap it on the back side. And that's going to take the stress out of it. And then i got to put a nut on the back side, nut and washer um, on the back here. So I'm going to use... A regular 10 millimeter for that and I'll be able to snake that through the other side okay good all right get you guys in the stand here come on all right sorry about that I got a mess over here I gotta pick this place up before the wife gets home if it feels like it's really getting tight back it off And do it again. And that is good. Good and tight. Okay, cool. All right. So we have the exhaust is all on. The air intake is all on. So the air going in and the air coming out is complete on this bike. I'm happy with the install. I'm happy with the parts. I'm happy with everything the way it came out. I just got to tighten up the back forks here. So I'll do that right now. Because I had to remove those uh, to get that where the um, exhaust tip comes out, the baffle. I had to make sure that I had clearance. So I took that off. I will tighten up that bolt. And then that pretty much will end that portion of the build. Wrong wrench here. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Let me get the right wrench. All right. So the back bolts are all back to tight. Everything on this bike is assembled as far as engines mounted, exhaust is on, air intake, the um, throttle, the cables, everything's hooked up there. Um, I am waiting for some parts to come in, which the um, uh, we've got mail has been absolutely crazy lately, but there's a spring that goes down here. I'm waiting for that. I am waiting for the headlight with the harness to put that in. And then um, I think that's all. I'm oh, and the pegs down bottom. Those are the only parts that I'm waiting for at this particular moment. And then um, we're going to be doing tires, tubes, and uh, after those parts come in and are done. So those are the next parts. So, as soon as those get here, we'll be finishing that up. Hey, YouTube. All right, so we are back on this bike right here. Um, in the last video, we did the exhaust, the clamp, and all that type of stuff. So, we're picking up where we left off on this bike. Um, so, let me show you guys what I did. So, I had painted the side cover. Now, this side cover right here, they painted purple. Um, I stripped the paint off it, primer painted it the same color as the frame, and then we're going to get new decals for it. I was able to save the old decal, so you, kinda can, you can kind of see what it's going to look like. You know, that's basically what it's going to look like right there, but this decal is junk, so I was able to match it up. eBay has these. And then here is the headlight assembly for this bike. Right here, we have that. And we have two harnesses. One came with the headlight. The other one is the one that came off of the bike that had a broken wire. Um, coincidentally, when the bike came, when the harness came in, it also too had a broken wire and it is a, a, a bad fix. So I don't like that wire. So we're not going to use this harness at this time. Since it's all together, we'll hang it up and use it on the other bike. We'll repair this one. So when we do the other bike from Harvey Spooner, we now have a wiring harness for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fix this actual harness that came off the bikes. 
and this had a broken wire that was up underneath the insulation and we're going to uh, fix this properly right here right now so let me get you guys in the stand but before i do please take a moment hit the subscribe button if you like repair videos and how to and um, hit that bell icon so when i post a video you guys get it all right let me get you guys in the stand and we'll do this all right hopefully you guys can see all right so as you can see i got some stuff out here i got my handy dandy little wire strippers these are really cool releases them the strip is on one side and you flip them over this way and they're a pair of uh, side cutters and back to strippers i like these these are good this uh solder that i'm using right here is flux core solder so that's what i use it's got the flux already built into it so you don't need to add any this little gizmo gadget right here actually holds wires together while you solder them. You can get this at Harbor Freight. This was actually a gift from uh, my best friend Dominic. And then, of course, I have my uh, my Weller uh, soldering iron, which is heating up so I can do the welding. And i got to clean it up here. Hold on a second. Get this wires all kind of bunched up around here. I don't want to get that too, uh, too going yet. Okay. And, of course, the wet sponge to keep the tip clean. And we'll crank this down. We'll turn this, actually, I'm going to turn it off for a little bit because I have some preparation to do. So I had stripped back the wire on both of these about a quarter of an inch. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it too, too well, but I'll put my hand here so you can possibly see it. You can see how it's black. The wire is black. You can't solder to black blackness. It's just not, that's not clean copper. You need to clean that. So I'm going to show you how I clean it. There's different ways of cleaning it, but I'll show you a, a quick technique that I do. I grabbed some 1500 grit sandpaper and then I, or you can use uh, emery cloth and I just simply go over it until it goes back to copper, to copper color. And then I'm going to clean it off with some alcohol. Okay, I just used some rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip. And you can see how it looks better already. See how it's copper? Now what I'm going to do is, now at that point, when you have this, you could twist this together. Like, to, you know, spin it like that so it's nice and twisted. And then I'm going to turn my uh, soldering iron on. And I'm going to do what they call tin, tinning the wires. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my solder and I'm going to stick it on one side of it and put the solder on the other until this thing turns solid, until it's a solid piece. And I'm going to do the same thing on the wiring harness tip, which is already cleaned. So let me get that thing heated up and I'll be right back. All right, so I got the solder and iron heated up and I'm going to tin the wires. So this is where this little handy dandy thing comes in handy because I can just clamp the wire into the into it just like so. Okay. And then with a clean soldering tip, that's how the soldering iron should look when you're about ready to solder with it. And then I grab my solder, put a little dab on it. And then I'm gonna put heat to one side. I have a little dab on there right now. Still not quite ready yet. All right, got it hot enough. So once again, I put a little dab of solder here on the tip, and then I'm going to run the uh, solder right down it until it makes it nice and smooth. Then clean my tip of my soldering iron. And you'll be able to see. Focus in, hold on. Okay. 
You can see how it's all tinned. Okay, so with that tinned, we're good there. Double check it, make sure. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the wiring harness itself. Twist the wire like so. Put it in here in the alligator clip to hold it. Grab my solder. Yep. <laughs> Got a big glob of solder on it. Move it with the solder and iron there. Okay, and now I have that harness part right there tin. Now all the wire like this is, is a little bit difficult to do, but you can still do it. Okay, now we have to weld this wire to this wire. But before we do that, we have to put a piece of heat shrink. We use a piece of heat shrink tube first on the wires. I'll slide that right clear over it and into the installation as far back as I can for the heat because you don't want the heat to start to shrink that. Okay, so the further back it is, the better off it is. And then this can go like this. We'll put this one like so. And this one right here can go here, like that. And then we're going to move them, maneuver them so they can be soldered together. Just like that. And then what I'll do is I'll put these two together. Like so, and then we'll be ready to uh, heat shrink it. Let me just try that real quick. Gotta get this in the right position here, guys. If you hit it just right, it will move on you. Okay. Like that. It's kind of tricky because you guys are... I got the tripod like right here on my, my arm, so... Just bear with me for a minute. Let me get my chair here. So I can actually see what I'm doing. Put that cool. And that, my friends, is a good connection. And you tug it, that's good. So then you take your heat shrink tube, if you didn't overheat it and melt it to it, which I didn't. Then I'm going to slide that right up over it, like so. I'm going to grab my heat gun. Oh, we better see what I'm doing here. My, use my heat gun.
And now, my friends, is a perfectly good wiring harness, properly fixed. So it's got um, heat shrink. So I, I soldered two wires together like this, and then I did that, and you can pull it, and you can come in apart, and it's solid, it's solid connection. Now, the insulation that was on this actually came up to about here. Well, oh, where are you guys? Hold on. Sorry about that. Came up to about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my electrical tape and I'm going to put the harness back together. So what I'm going to do on the first loop, I go around, pull on it tight. I go fully around one, one and a half times, and then I start to go down overlapping. So as I'm going down, this tape is going halfway over itself. Making sure it looks good. You know, one and a half turns on the other one and then pull it and then that right there is a perfectly good harness just like that so now I have a full harness repaired properly for the Z50 and that's how we're going to fix the other one so now what we're going to do is we're going to install this harness onto the bike all right, so now we have the electrical harness. We're going to install this on the bike. So we know this big square connector right here is for the connector for the magneto. So we know that this is the halfway point. Here is the ground right here that goes up to your coil, uh, back mount, and then this right here, harness right here, was for the tail lights. So we got to get this into place and how it went in. So I know that this part right here was up underneath here, and it was the grommet right here, and then there's another grommet right here. Um, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to use this first hook right here to hold in the harness like so and then there's another hook up up here by the uh, front if you guys can see that or not right up here so we're going to hook this end up into there as well get the stall cable out of here put the harness up in the front like so now we're just kind of getting the things into position to where they need to go there's a big clip down bottom here, so let's plug this big one in. So to do that, we're going to slide this back. There's our connector. We're going to make sure that they line up, match up. Um, because I believe there are two different styles of harnesses for this thing. Depending upon the magneto used. But we're going to use this one because it came off this one. So if it's wrong, we will fix it. Let me get a flashlight so I can just confirm the wiring. I want to match up the wires. Okay, let me turn this on here. You guys can see. All right. Now, what we're going to do is you're going to notice that um, I checked on the wires in the back here. So I'll show you right here real quick. This wire right here is a blue. This wire right here is a black. On this harness... It's black with a red wire, but it's got a blue tag on it. So that means it's correct. I'm going to put this in first, like so. They line up. This rubber boot's going to go over it like this. And then we're going to tuck the wiring up into a place where, where it's going to go. Side here like that. And then this harness is going to go through here. If I can get it to anyway. Here's the picture. Okay, so this harness. It's kind of hard to do because this big metal tab is right here. But it's going to fit through the back side somehow. Let's move this back out of here for now. It's just really a matter of um, 
maneuvering the wires through. Start with the brake lights. Pull that through. And you get your ground. Okay. That's the coil ground right there. That. This can get tucked back in here, like so, and to the hooks where they're supposed to be. Okay, so now we got the wiring coming through. There is a little wire missing here, which might be up underneath. So we're missing the coil wire. So there's a coil wire up under here. So we're going to make sure you get, because here it is right here. If you don't, your coil will not work. No spacko. Okay. Alright, and then this wire here can plug into here. And that's for my coil. Like so. Alright. Then this harness part right here comes up through this grommet, like so, and gets grounded right there. Boom. All right, let me get a 10 millimeter wrench. That was 10 millimeter, bigger than that. I love it. Okay, I was wrong on that. Um, this actually doesn't go like that at all. See, even I make mistakes. Alright, let's get all this out of here for a minute. And this harness doesn't go down there at all like that. It actually goes through the top up here. I had to look at my pictures to see how I took it apart, which is one of those things that come in handy. Remember I was telling you guys about your, uh, what do you call it there? Use your resources. So I'll pull this down like this. Same thing. Check your resources. Okay, pull it all down through. This comes up like this. Here is the coil. Right like that. Okay, it goes down through the bottom, goes up top on your harness. Here we go, like that. Okay, that's a lot better. And then this fits over here into that connector on the side. Okay, that looks a whole lot better. Just like that. And this piece right here plugs into your coil wire, which someone made this jumper wire, which didn't look right to me. This actually plugs right directly into here. Okay. All right. Then the ground wire comes up through this grommet. That part I knew. And then this part right here, there's a clip up in here someplace. Yep, yeah, way back up here, right here. So right under where my thumb is right here, there's a clip. So this harness right here is going to go up and over everything up and over so we'll push it through here like this then it's going to go down it's going to go into the clip okay and I'm, uh, I'm using my middle finger to push the clip up and in so it's locked in place and then the rest of it which are the other two wires. I'm gonna come up through the frame rail. Like so. And then we're just gonna match the wires. Brown to brown. And green to green. Okay. 
just like that. Right there. Okay, you want to make sure you feel them click in. If they don't click in, it's not going to be right. Okay. All right, so those are all in. Then now, we have the ground that we have to put up through. Once again, the ground is going to come through the grommet like that and then be grounded right there. I have to get a wrench for that and then take that off. Okay. Let's ground off. That washer nut. Okay, that's on. So now the whole back of the wiring from the front to the back is done. And let's put this on just because, because we can for now. Okay. From the grommet. Okay, and the side cover is on. Look at that, guys, huh? Now we're up to the front. So that's how all that goes and sits in there. And let's go to the front. So now we're into the front with all the spaghetti. Where does all these wires go? I'll make sure you guys are all that goes. So let's just stop plugging them in. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna find your brown, which is this wire right here. Goes up to your brown. Like that. This goes up to your red. Which goes into this like this. Okay. Then you have your blue, your black, and your green. The black is your ignition. You know, it goes up to your kill switch right there. You can get that in there. Okay. And then you get your, your uh, green for ground, which is going to go onto the other side over here to the connector we just, we just welded onto. Okay. So now we have one and two wires right there. And let's go get the, um, the headlight. And we'll see what we have to do to tap into that. Okay, so now we got to mount the headlight assembly on there. So let's move this out of the way here. It's going to be sitting right up inside there in the wiring. It's just going to get tucked into the back of it, into that hole. So let's get this mounted into place. So you need your bolts and your specialty nuts. Yeah. What, buddy? That's all right, don't worry about it. Go do your score, please. All right. Okay, there's that one. And these just fit right in there like so. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Okay, now I'll tighten that down. here okay headlight bucket is on I'm gonna take my wiring I'm gonna stick it through the back side here right into that grommet and tuck it in all of it okay now I got my wiring is coming through the headlight bucket and into its position where it's gonna go all right so on the headlight bucket there is a blue wire there is a blue wire and a green wire right there for your headlight. Okay, so on your headlight, you're going to notice that there is a white wire, which is actually not used on this model. Um, this bike only has an on and off switch for your headlight. It's not a high and low. 
So if you're if you were working on a bike that had the all the options on it for the high and low switch, you'd be using this wire, but you're not going to. Although it is a good alternative if you if you blow your low beam headlight, you can literally just swap over the two and then this is a spare wire and the high beam side of the headlight will work. So it's a pretty good little tip for you there. Because you know how the bulbs are. Alright, and then we'll put the blue to blue. Okay, and then the green. Make sure you get the little green thing on there. Yep. The green to the green. On the other side there. And once you get that in there. Okay, got that to click in. And then your headlight. There's a little tab right here. It fits underneath this piece right here. You should lock in like that. And then, kind of all just kind of fits up inside there like so. And then a screw down bottom and then. Okay, so after I plugged in the headlight and I showed you guys that I wanted to hit the bucket with uh, some black paint to make it look a little, a little fresher, you know, to match the side cover there. So I did that and then the cover screws on like I showed you with that little tab. And there's one screw right here at the bottom, throw that in. And then that is it. So that is what the bike looks like with a uh, front headlight assembly. And um, the wiring's pretty much done, except for one more thing we gotta do. Um, just because I like to have things the way they're supposed to, we gotta put one more strap on there and uh, let me get you guys in the stand and we'll get crack a lacking. Okay, so the only thing we have left to do on this um, harness is put this here strap on it. Holds it into place. Hopefully it still stays good. Good, and then right here, this little tab sticking out is where the rubber's going to go for the fuel tank. So we're good we, as long as we have clearance. And that is how that wiring harness will go. Just like that. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's it for the wiring. All the wiring on this bike is done. So to finish off this bike, I literally need ties and tubes. The wheel bearings actually have it in the cleaner. The wheel bearings are actually good. So we're going to reuse those bearings. We're going to just put um, tires, tubes. We need the chain guard, a chain, the seat cover with foam. I have the nice base, a tank, the two little rubbers on the end there, um, and everything else for that I have. Um, let's see here. It needs the little switch right here on the handlebars and this right here will be a uh, in the chain guard this will be a nice bike so the next things i'm going to order for oh and the pegs which are coming and the shifter i don't i have to get a shifter but the pegs are coming with the kickstand built onto it so that'll take care of that so this will be up and uh, going um in no time so looking forward to doing that so um this is going to be it for this bike for a little while um, I'm going to put the pegs on. It's only four bolts underneath. I'll do that off camera and I'll show it to you guys at another time um, What it'll look like until we get the rest of the parts and pieces to throw this thing together because I need to move this out of here Because I have too many projects right now going on at the same exact time so um, I definitely want to get that done. So it looks pretty cool the, the uh, side cover came out nice the headlight assembly very happy with that. It's got the wiring all in. The tail light. The fenders are both good. Um, the brake cable is good. And the springs are on order for the other side. Um, so basically all the, all the small stuff, guys, is is really pretty much done. I mean, the, the shifter, the chain guard, the two bolts for that. Um, I mean, we've literally gone through the entire thing. So it's actually come out pretty well. I'm quite happy with it. So I'm looking forward to riding this one in the spring. So, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me. If you guys have any questions or comments on this build, please put them down below. Until then, I will talk to you guys later. I'm out.